We're going to increase the contrast of this image using Curves Transformation. We open the real-time preview and turn on Track View so that we can see the image's histogram underneath the curve. Now we're going to test the image to see its values on the graph. We want to increase the contrast between the brightest areas of the nebula and the darkest ones. We therefore need to increase the slope of the segment of the curve indicated by the image readings. Although the real-time preview lets us adjust the curve any way we like, we're going to apply the process to a preview so that it's easier to see how the adjustments affect the image noise, because any increase in contrast always leads to an increase in noise. Once we've applied the transformation, we can check to see if the background noise level is tolerable. Now we also want to modify the color saturation. We go to Intensity Transformations and open Color Saturation. At this point, it's important to remember a key property of previews, and that's that they have a volatile state. This means that if we increase the color saturation, for example, and apply it to the preview, the curve's transformation is automatically undone. Now, the only process that has been applied to the preview is the color saturation. If we apply the curve's transformation again, we lose the color saturation step. In principle, we cannot apply one process on top of another in a preview. The only way to do this is to apply the curves to the main view. As the preview updates to match the current state of the main view, we can now apply the second process to the preview. How can we solve this problem in a single preview? Let's undo what we've just done. Once we've applied the first process to the preview, we can accumulate the second process. We do this by clicking on Store Preview. When we accumulate the process, we can see that the Undo Preview and Redo Preview buttons are disabled. Now we can apply a second process to the preview, in this case, Color Saturation. This process isn't applied to the current state of the main view, but to the accumulated process we've already applied to the preview. Now both the curve's transformation and the color saturation have been applied to the preview. How can we review what we've done? We right-click on the preview and select Load History Explorer. This brings up a history of all the processes applied to the preview. In this case, we can see the two processes applied to the initial state. We can navigate between the different states. If we want to view the initial state, we double-click in this column. We can go back to the second process or the first. We've only applied two processes here, but we can create as complex a processing sequence as we like. If we're happy with the results, we can apply these two processes to the main view. We do this using the New Instance button in the History Explorer. There are two things we can do with this button. The first is to click and drag it to the workspace to create a Process Container icon. A Process Container is a process that stores a list of process instances. We can accumulate all the processes applied to an image here. As with any other icon, we can apply it to a view by dragging and dropping. This applies all the processes it contains to that view. For example, we can drag it to the main view, and the two processes will be applied. The second thing we can do with the New Instance button is to drag it from the History Explorer and apply it directly to the main view. Or we can apply it to another preview.
there's an important point to remember here. When we apply the sequence of processes in the History Explorer to the main view, the previews automatically update to match the current state of the main view. And when we look at the History Explorer, it's empty. If we undo the process container applied to the main view and load the History Explorer, the main view is in its initial state. However, the processing histories of the two previews show that both processes have been applied. Another important point is that the process container is a process in itself. This means that if we apply it to the main view, the History Explorer will only show one process, the process container, which contains the two processes. If we want to separate the two processes, we have to open the process container and drag and drop them one by one. Now the two states are separate in the main view's processing history. Once we've processed the main view, we can carry on processing the previews. For example, we can sharpen the smaller details. At this point, this image has the two steps from the main view. plus a third step, the sharpening with MLT. We can also apply this to this other preview. When we're happy with the result, we can apply it to the main view. Now the main view has three steps, and the processing histories of the previews now show only the initial state, which is the current state of the main view. In this way, we can gradually apply a whole sequence of processes to an image. This sequence consists of three simple steps. A curves transformation to increase the overall contrast of the image, a color saturation adjustment, and an increase in the contrast of the small-scale structures. If I wrote you a song If I got every word Perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper Would it make any difference? Would it change for the better? If I wrote you a poem If I posted a letter 